CataractCoach.com. Resident case number 80, Stop and Chop. Great job, and here's how to take it to the next level. Let's watch together. So first things first, nice, it's in focus, good draping, eyes in primary. I see a little povado eye down there. Start with the paras and teases there. That uh, looks reasonable. There's the para. What are we going to put inside here? Maybe some anesthetic. Make sure you get past decimates there. Get that in there a little bit. There we go. Probably some anesthetic. That looks good. Here comes our viscoelastic. And let's see, coming across here. Again, struggling a little bit to get inside the eye, but that's pretty good. And let's see what we got here. Big fill of viscoelastic, or is that still anesthetic? That's viscoelastic. And now let's see the incision. Let's watch carefully here. So using the keratome to enter. A little anterior, though, no? I think that's a little anterior. It does, well, it did nick the limbal vessels. I just prefer to be just a fraction of a millimeter more uh, posterior. Now let's see the rex is being done here. Poking on the cystitome. I like how the three lights, the Purkinje image, is right in the center of your field there, so you're keeping the eye pretty well centered. Got a nice flap turned over. And now going in with these specialized forceps and grabbing that. And let's get a rex is done. One grab, two grabs. You're pretty good. Oh, that's your attending who's squirting, your professor. Very nice. Be careful of those Rex's danger zones. You don't know about danger zones. I don't know. If you're a young resident watching this, go to catacoach.com and look for the keyword danger zones on the search engine there. There's a whole video about Rex's danger zones. You should definitely know that. Pretty good Rex. I like it. It's very nicely done. Now let's see. We're going to do some hydro dissection probably. Here's the BSS cannula. I like that flat tip cannula. That's kind of neat. And then where's our fluid wave? Not just yet. Get a fluid wave. Nope. Still not yet. Try again. There we go. I like the persistence. Very good. And let's see. Can you rotate it? If it does not spin, you will not win. But that looks like you can rotate. That's pretty good. Now let's see the technique here. So here comes a FACO probe. So FACO probe in the right hand. Looks like a chopper in the left hand. Looks like the Nagahara chopper maybe. And this is stop and chop we already know. So we saw the title slide. So let's see the groove down the middle. Here comes a groove. I like how it started just inside the subincisional rexus. I like that the passes are pretty good. Remember, deeper in the center, a little shallower towards the periphery. That's pretty good there. You may want to widen up or maybe just crack it already. That's, wow, that's pretty good. Very nicely done, I got to tell you. Good rotating of the nucleus. And now buzzing in with a FACO probe and chopper going around, a little horizontal chop there. Very nicely done. I'm really digging it. And you're doing a great job. Give the eye, give, bring the eye a little bit back in primary. There you go. That looks pretty good. Just take your time. Get these quadrants out. Chop the other half. You can even sub-chop if you want. Almost chop that one. It was a good try. So bringing it up here. Pretty good again. So you're doing great. If this is case 80, you're really doing very well. So that looks good. Is there a little bit of a bounce in the AC? Is there a little bit of chamber bounce? If so, you want to rethink your settings there. Let's go to the other hemi-nuclear piece. Chop it in half. Nicely done there. Let's think about it. What settings would you want here? Well, probably a pretty high vacuum. At least 300 millimeters of mercury or more to hold the nucleus while you chop it. A reasonable flow to keep things going. At least 30, if not 40 cc a minute. And then vacuum, you don't need... Uh, we talked about the then flow rate we talked about. Faco power, you don't need a whole lot of it. It's not a real dense nucleus. So here we go, getting that last piece up. I like the chopper in the safe position. That's really well done. Bit of an epinuclear shell that remains. I try to get the epinuclear shell out with the FACO probe. Yeah, just vacuum there. Vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. And see if you don't use any energy here. Vacuum only and see if you can just bring the whole thing up out of the bag or flip it over. Flipping the epinuclear shell usually is the easy way for me. Bringing that up, chopper behind it. I like the two-handed technique. And just kind of tease it out of the bag. Rotate it more if you need to. Once you get it flipped over, though, it just becomes so easy. So bring it up, 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 vacuum only. At this point, I'd still do only vacuum, no energy. Just vacuum here until I've got it loosened up. And then if you need to, you can blip a little bit of energy just to keep the piece moving in there. So it came out pretty well. There's a little bit left. There you go. And again, it's, it's coming off our screen here a little bit. So it'd be nice that you, you're, you're raising your hands here. So look, look at the Purkinje images. See how they're not in the center anymore? Yeah, you want to put your hands down a little bit. Don't lift up on your hands. And get that eye back in primary. Set up your scope here a little bit better. And there you go. Last piece has come down. Beautifully done. That's a fantastic job so far. For case 80, I'm really impressed. So you're going to be you'll be world class. Give it time. Now, in the interim, remember to go to cataractcoach.com, the teaching website. Got to leave YouTube for a minute. 
but there's a free PDF book to learn cataract surgery, a free 25-part curriculum series. If you're a young surgeon, you have no excuse not to make use of those free resources. Now, going back to the case here, here's the cortex removal of the coaxial IA probe. Clean it up pretty nicely. I like that. Good pivoting technique here. Getting that subincisional stuff, too. Brought it out in nice big sheets. That bag looks pretty darn clean. I like this. Beautiful. Let's get the lens in. So nice case so far. Patient obviously has some good anesthesia on board. Patient's happy. Here's some viscoelastic, probably a cohesive agent to fill up the caps or bag there. That looks good. Bag's filled up. Let's see the lens. Let's get that lens in there. Here you go. Someone loaded the lens for you. That's very kind of them. Looks like a single piece of acrylic lens being injected. Get that nice and easy in the caps or bag. And look at that. Opening it right up. And that should do very well for this patient. Let's see the rexa size. Now you can judge. That's a six millimeter overall optic size. It's not focusing at six millimeters, but five, uh, maybe five and change. But look at that rexa's overlap. It's pretty good. I like it. So young surgeon, you are doing a fantastic job. Keep up the good work. And you will be a world-class surgeon at some point in your very uh, not too far distant future. Very near future, you'll get it be a really fantastic. 80 is impressive. So let's see, what's the review here? What can we do better? I still didn't love your incision, to be honest. I think your Rexus is pretty good for case 80. I thought the groove was fantastic. The stop and chop technique was very good. Um, as you know, I'm not a fan of hydrating the sides here, but maybe your attending is, and that's okay. But I thought the technique overall was great. Just a little bit of, of the eye going out of the primary position during FACO. But really, you're keeping it... Keep it real. You're doing a fantastic job. You just need more reps, as they say, right? Just get more cases under your belt. Oh, a little leak there from the incision there. So what do you want to do now? Well, honestly, as a resident, if you've only done 80 cases, just put a suture in. You need to know how to suture anyway. You could hydrate more. Let's take a look. Is it still leaking? You know, maybe the better part of judgment is to put a suture in. It still leaks. To me, that's still leaky. How much are you going to hydrate? If you do a little bit of hydration, it doesn't seal up. It probably needs a suture. Let's just see. I'm watching the video for the first time with you. Now it looks a little bit better. Give that end of the pump function a little bit of time. Give it, you know, 30 seconds to start kicking in and start pulling down that roof of the incision to seal it. And then just make sure it's absolutely watertight because last thing you want is a leak on post-op day one. And so let's, oh, I pro back in the eye again. Uh, I don't know. What did you see? Did you see something? Maybe some viscoelastic? Not sure exactly why the fake pro, the eye pro went back in the eye again. Now let's get this sealed up here. I still worry about that incision. Just watch this to the end. I, I want, I'm interested now. So again, a little more hydration. That looks pretty good. Back and forth. Oh, patient under top of anesthesia. I saw that. Told the patient, look at the light. I noticed that. That looks pretty good. Lens is centered. How's the incision looking? Nah, just put a suture already. Why suffer? I think you should put a suture. I would stop hydrating. At this point, the patient deserves a suture. It's not that big of a deal. And if you've done 80 cases and you're in your training, you're learning, you need to know how to do a suture. So there's my number one nitpick of the whole case. At the end of the case, I told you at the beginning of the case, I didn't like your incision that much. At the end of the case, your incision doesn't seal very well. Yes, maybe you got lucky now, but that hydration is not going to last forever. I'd put a suture in. Leave a comment below. What do you think? Would you put a suture in that? Especially if you've done less than 100 cases. Yeah, think about it. And remember, full, full teaching materials, full book, curriculum series, all that's on cataractcoach.com. Go check it out. It'll help you.